G'day guys, welcome back to the channel. My name's Caitlin and I'm an American living in beautiful Sydney, Australia. As a lot of my viewers know, my husband Mark is Australian, I am American, born and raised, and we've had so many people ask us, why did you pick Australia instead of the US when you decided where you wanted to live? I'm breaking down that question and giving you guys the reasons why we chose for me to move to Australia instead of my husband to move to the States. So if you want to see what those reasons are, grab a Bicky, grab a cuppa, and let's get right into this video. So this first one is very specific to us, but the rest of them on this list are pretty general reasons why. And the first reason we chose for me to move to Australia is because my husband is a truckie over here. And driver's licenses don't really translate that easily if you're going from Australia to the States. You would basically need to get a commercial driver's license, which costs quite a bit of money to get into. And on top of that, takes quite a bit of time before you're actually able to get your license and then be employable as a truck driver. And truck drivers make decent money in the States if you're willing to drive interstate. But for us, it didn't make sense for him to move halfway around the world to spend three out of four weeks in a truck on end. So. Because he was able to get local jobs here, he has a network build and my job I pretty much capped at where I could go. We decided that career-wise, professionally, it made more sense for me to move over to Australia than it did for him to move over to the States. I know that one is very subjective, but the next one on this list is not. I think this is something that resonates with a lot of people. And that is the cost of healthcare here in Australia. So here in Australia, if you're an Australian permanent resident, or if you're an Australian citizen, or if you're under certain types of visas, you're eligible for Medicare over here in Australia, which is so much cheaper than just having private health insurance over in the States. There's very strict rules as to whether or not you're eligible for Medicare or Medicaid under 65 over in the States. And even then, it doesn't necessarily cover everything. I know people who still have to pay thousands of dollars a year with Medicare and with Medicaid. So just because you have those doesn't necessarily mean that you're covered financially. Over here, the most I've had to pay was about $600 for a surgery. Which is unbelievable to me because over in the States, that same surgery would have cost me about $12,000. I know a lot of Americans, when they hear healthcare, they sort of bristle and think that Australian healthcare is this slow, backwards, poorly educated system, and it is absolutely not true. Australia has one of the best rated healthcare systems in the world. And there's a reason that dozens and dozens and dozens of doctors all across the world want to come work in Australia. Well, yes, there is a workforce shortage of healthcare workers here. The reality is that's become a global issue. That's not just an Australian issue. There's workforce shortages over in the States as well. You get good healthcare here, you get quality healthcare here, and for the most part, you're not gonna go bankrupt with medical debt over here. So cheaper but still quality healthcare was one of the reasons that we decided for me to move over here instead of my husband moving to the States. Now this one I know kind of upsets some people, but it is the truth. And overall, Australia does have safer schools and safer neighborhoods. Now, why my husband and I don't have kids together, the reality is we still live in a neighborhood that's fairly safe. And I know a lot of people know that I live out here in Western Sydney, and Western Sydney does have some dodgy suburbs to it. But over in the States, literally a block away from where my house used to be was a shooting a couple of weeks ago where two people died in front of a nail salon. And that's not the first shooting that took place in the neighborhood this year. That's not the first killing that took place in the neighborhood this year because of gun violence over in the States. And it boggles my mind that it doesn't seem to bother Americans as much. And I think part of it is because when I was over there, I realized just how overexposed we were to it. It's rampant, it's everywhere, and you're starting to just live with it and roll with it. And I say that to Australians here, and they're just flabbergasted that we're still letting stuff like this happen in our neighborhoods, let alone what's going on with the schools. And talking to my husband, like, we can move to other places in the city, obviously. We don't even have to live in Philly. We could live anywhere in the States, realistically. But safety was a big concern for me. I wanted to live somewhere that was near a city. And if we were going to move my husband halfway around the world, we would still want to stay relatively close to my friends and family. So we had some kind of support system. But with how dangerous a lot of the major cities, not just Philly, have become over the years, and even some of the suburbs outside of the cities, we were really concerned about what safety would be like if my husband were to move over to the States. So Partly for that reason, we decided that I would move over here to Australia where gun crime is much lower per capita, gun violence is much lower per capita. 
homicides by guns are much lower per capita. So that was one of the reasons that we decided for me to move here. Another reason is that there's so much more exposure to nature here in Australia. And I know a lot of people might think of that and go, well, America's just as big, like mainland US is just as big as Australia. What are you talking about? There's so much incredible nature out in America. Why is that something that you would take into consideration moving to Australia? And lived in a major city, worked in a major city, traveled to other major cities, and they call New York the concrete jungle, but a lot of cities have that feeling. Whereas I've walked around the CBDs in some of the major cities here and there's still this incredible connection to nature. I walk around the CBD in Sydney and obviously there are skyscrapers, office buildings everywhere, but you can still smell the harbor. You can still feel that freshness. You don't get that in a lot of cities over in the States and the reality is I would like to live closer to a city and closer to my family if we had moved over to the States. So not just in day-to-day -day life, because you can move to a pretty sparse suburb out here. You can move to a pretty sparse suburb out in the States, but kind of the farther away you go, the more and more it costs as well. So home ownership was also a small consideration. So there's a little bonus one that I'll throw in there. Even though housing prices are ridiculously expensive here, it feels a lot more attainable to have a house here in Australia than it does over in the States. And that's just based on us, our personal experiences, personal finances, and some other factors. But when you're in the cities here, there's still this connection to nature and things like bushwalking are so common over here. Going to the beach, I mean, that's something that is still a little bit of a distance from us living in Western Sydney, but I love the idea that I could just hop on a train and then a bus over to Bondi and be in Bondi Beach, one of the most iconic beaches in the world. That's one beach. Australia has over 10,000 beaches. We live close to the Blue Mountains. In fact, one of Mark's aunts lives up in the Blue Mountains and we go up to see her a couple times a year. And even just the drive up there is gorgeous. It's stunning. It's incredible. Even if you work in a city or if you're like me and you work mostly from home and you're mostly in the suburbs, you still feel this incredible connection to nature here in Australia. And in any city that I visited in the States, I never felt that sort of connection. Just being surrounded by nature and having that connection with nature is one of the reasons we decided for me to move over here to Australia. Sorry about that guys, just had to change my camera battery out. And the next reason is that there are so many amazing places to see here in Australia. And as an American, before I came over here to visit, before I really started learning about Australia, I thought like a lot of Americans that Australia was really just Sydney and Melbourne with the outback. And that was it. There wasn't that much to see. There wasn't that much to do. There weren't that many places to go. And that is so not true. Whether you love museums, whether you love hiking, whether you love going to the beach or the mountains, whether you like going camping, there are so many things to do here in Australia and you will never get tired of seeing some incredible places here. Well, my husband and I went camping for the first time back in December 2021 and we went camping on a farm and it was one of the most incredible, beautiful places I had ever been. I've been to some gorgeous beaches here and there are still so many on my list of places that I want to see. I know Australians who have never been able to travel overseas for whatever reason and they still feel like there's still so much of the country that they want to see. There's so many places that they want to go to, so many things that they want to visit. And I think that's one of the incredible things about Australia is that even though it's just a handful of major cities and the reality is like two thirds of the land is pretty much uninhabitable, there's still so much to do here. There's so many things to see, so many places to go, so many experiences you can have. And coming over from the States the first time, this is just for a visit, I was really concerned that there wasn't going to be that much. I was coming over on a three week holiday and I would have seen most of the things in Australia that I would have wanted to see, that I would have been bored after three weeks. And I've lived here for a year and a half and I feel like I have barely scratched the surface of what Australia has to offer. I know Australians who've lived here their entire lives and still feel that way. So even though there are still so many places to see in the States and so much to do in the States, that was one of the reasons that we decided for me to move to Australia was that there's still so many things in Australia that the reality is we would never be bored. The next reason on this list does tie a little bit into number two, but that is the great quality of healthcare and education here in Australia. And I know when you look at the numbers and you look at statistics, America does have a more educated workforce, but Australia does have a healthier population. Now, America does have more hospitals. They have 
urgent care centers and clinics that aren't that readily available over here in Australia. Especially if you go into some of the more regional and rural, remote parts of Australia, it can actually be really difficult to find quality health care or even just health care in general out in those areas. Because over in the States, even some of the more remote areas are still close enough to a major hospital. But both countries have a great quality when it comes to health care. They put a lot of money into healthcare. Doctors spend years and years of their lives training in a certain area, a certain specialty. While there are so many more medical colleges over in the States than there are here in Australia, that doesn't mean that the doctors aren't getting quality training. And when it comes to education, there are just more options for people over here in Australia. Over in the States, trade schools are starting to become a little less taboo. Traditionally in the States, if you didn't go to college or university or start a job immediately after high school, then you were kind of seen as a failure, even if we went to trade school for something important like electric, plumbing, IT, cosmetology, whatever the field may be, you were still to some degree seen as a bit of a failure unless you owned your own business. Whereas over here, TAFE is readily available in just about every state and territory. There are universities that are offering more and more online courses over here. It's so much easier now to get a certificate or a master's degree or a bachelor's degree, whatever you want to get. It's readily available just to wear anywhere here in Australia. So coming over, I didn't feel like I was going to be pigeonholed into one area of work just based on my experiences. If I wanted to, I can take a TAFE course and get a certificate somewhere. I can go for a master's degree in a different area. I could take online courses on my lunch break and before and after work if I wanted to. There are so many options that are here in Australia and I didn't realize that as an American coming over. We're so used to the idea of so many people coming over to America to study internationally and we have the Ivy League colleges over there and we have these amazing sports teams because of course we're going to talk about colleges. Naturally we have to talk about sports. But we're so ingrained in the idea that America has the best college systems, the most incredible college systems, the highest amount of student loan debt anywhere in the world because of these college systems. That somehow that makes American education better than the rest of the world. And while there are some schools and universities that, yes, are absolutely considered like the top leaders of whatever their field is, Australia has some amazing education systems here as well. That was one of the reasons that we decided for me to move over here was because even if I wanted to get out of the field I was previously working in, there are still options for further education for me over here and obviously options for Australian citizens like my husband as well. The last thing, and this ties into work, is that there's less of a competitive mindset over here. Now, don't get me wrong, you're gonna find competitive people in whatever industry you work in, in whatever office or whatever field you go to. I think that's just part of human nature. But over in the States, everybody felt like they were in competition with each other in different areas that I've worked in. Talk to Americans who worked in different areas. It felt like so many people constantly had to one up on each other. People would sort of hoard their secrets or you'd hear people say that you need to be, you need to learn a skill in whatever office you're in so that way you become indispensable. Like you need to learn a skill that the entire office relies on and then you need to make sure that you never share that skill with anybody else so that way they will always have to keep you on board. And I don't feel any sense of that over here. Now granted, I have limited work experience over here in Australia. I've been here for a year and a half. I've worked for one law firm for a week after I quit, and then I've worked in this one particular company for well over a year now. So I do have limited experience. I'm very well aware of that. Typically, you don't see the same level of competition that you do over in the States. It doesn't mean it doesn't exist. It doesn't mean that some fields aren't competitive, but there's less pressure to constantly be competing with your coworkers, with your colleagues. There's a little bit more of a sense and feeling of camaraderie and honestly, a bit of feeling of mentorship as well. Somebody I work with now has basically taken me under her wing to teach me everything she knows. And it's tough to find anybody like that over in the States who's willing to just share all of their secrets, all of their knowledge with you. I think that is absolutely incredible over here. Again, acknowledging that I come from limited experience with a very great company that I work for. Overall, there's just less competition over here in the workforce and there's more of this feeling of camaraderie. And while this wasn't something I was super aware of coming over, it is one of the reasons I'm so glad that I moved to Australia instead of my husband moving over to the States. So that's it for this video, you guys. Those are the main reasons why 
At the end of the day, we decided that I would move to Australia instead of my husband moving over to America. So did anything on this list surprise you at all? I'm sure some things are a little bit cliche, but they are reasons that we factored into why I moved over here. So if you guys like this video, please hit the like and subscribe button down below. I so, so appreciate the support, you guys. It really does mean a lot to me, and I will see you all in my next video. Bye!